the billionaire who wants to become president of Taiwan is trying his hand at high-stakes diplomacy. Foxconn chairman Teddy Guo has offered to help the U.S. and China reach what would be the biggest bilateral trade deal in history. I have a direct channel of communication. This is why I want to specifically tell Trump that I want to be a peacemaker. For Guo, it's more than just a publicity stunt ahead of elections next year on the island China considers a rogue province. Foxconn manufactures one of America's most high-profile exports to China, the Apple iPhone. And that business is under threat. As Washington says, Beijing has backtracked on commitments made during previous negotiations. The U.S. plans to raise tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods this week. President Donald Trump says he's also considering new tariffs on an additional $325 billion of Chinese products. Those would cover virtually everything that the U.S. buys from China. Vice Premier Liu Ha will lead a delegation to Washington this week to address U.S. concerns. That's helped the yuan and Chinese stocks recover from losses caused by Trump's threat. Meanwhile, U.S. allies in Europe have warned that additional tariffs would harm the global economy. We are all connected in the world, and trade without barriers and without new protectionist measures has an effect on employment, trade exchange, economic growth, and ultimately tax income. And I really urge everybody to avoid decisions that would uh, threaten and jeopardize the world growth in the coming month. Beijing is still hoping for a breakthrough in the coming days. It says a deal would enrich the economies of both the U.S. and China, their trading partners, and businesses with interests on both sides. Paulo Montesilio, TRT World. Let's get more on the story now with Rajnish Narula in the UK. He's a professor of international business regulation at the University of Reading's Henley Business School. Welcome back to Money Talks, Rajnish. So Robert Lighthizer says Beijing has backed out of some of the agreements it's made in a draft deal, which is why the Trump administration is threatening an all-out trade war. What do you think those agreements were? Well, I, I think the main issue here is uh, China's intention. Um, it's, it's made in China 2025 uh, objective, which is to become one of the top ten, the top players in ten different industries by 2025, and be the world leader in artificial intelligence by 2030. So this is what this is. This is embedded into the Chinese constitution. And it's one of it's what uh, what the president of China has promised as his mandate for the next ten or fifteen years. Um, so, um, and of course, this involves uh, in, an industrial policy that in, implies subsidies, uh, technology transfer, and so on from other countries and building up of Chinese capacity. So, this is at the heart of China's economic policy for the next ten or fifteen years. So what the Trump administration want is for China to promise not to try and catch up, essentially. Wow. So do you think and the bigger that picture... Is what is that? Uh, sorry to yeah. interrupt, uh, Rajin. So you think the bigger picture here isn't just about uh, certain policies, but it, it's about perhaps uh, China one day overtaking the US in its economic might? Yes, I think some, there are some hawks in the United States who think that uh, that this is actually a, uh, an existential threat to the U.S. Uh, hegemony and, and position as a superpower. So they feel that uh, by asking China to slow down, essentially, slow down its economic growth and slow down its, its catching up with uh, the U.S. and with the West uh, as part of, their, a part of the, the deal. China, of course, is not happy with this idea. I mean, asking them to say, slow down, people, we don't want you to catch up. This seems to be a step too far for the Chinese. And these talks that are about to get underway in Washington was billed as the final round of negotiations before some sort of a trade deal. Do you think that's still the case? Well, it's very interesting, Oscar, that if you look at the Chinese newspapers, they're not seeing anything about this rift. They're assuming everything is going according to plan and uh, the vice premier is going to be 
in Washington on the 9th and 10th of May. That's all they're saying. And so there's no actual change. The Chinese are, are not blinking. They, I think they think, they're not sure whether Trump is being, is just kind of pulling a fast one as he often does and trying to raise the stakes by, by being difficult. Or, in, or, or he's actually, he actually means it. They're not quite sure. So they're going to turn up in Washington and negotiate in good faith because they believe they have made enough uh, movement. Uh, and if they make a few more noises and sounds and, and, and compromise a little bit, uh, Trump is just making the noise to at attract attention. And then he can claim to have had a bigger victory when he got the same thing that he was going to get anyway. Mm. And Donald Trump says that uh, he plans on more than doubling tariffs on Chinese goods uh, on Friday this week. Do you think he'll follow through on that yeah. threat? I really don't think so. I mean, it would be incredibly foolish. We'd watch the stock markets all go downwards. Uh, there's nothing good that will come out of such a move. Uh, I think he's bluffing, and the Chinese government, I think, believes that he's bluffing. The markets aren't quite sure, so they've been going up and down. The markets have actually built into the prices that the, they believe that there will be a deal on Friday of some sort. If it's not a deal, at least there will be enough of a deal that uh, they will, it will not be necessary for the United States to try and apply these higher tariffs. OK, we'll see what happens if, uh, over the next few days. Rajanish Narula in Reading, thank you so much again for your time.